are back. Listening to you would think me, Philadelphia Flyers podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Collington, and joining me as always, Kevin Durso. Kevin, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be doing better if all three games were at seven o'clock this week. I'd be doing oh, there better. You go. If the, I'd be doing better if the Flyers had picked up more than one point this week. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of ways I could be doing better, but as it sits here, I'm doing okay. We're we're recording this show on Sunday morning. Right after this show, I'm leaving to head to the Philly area. You know, to eventually end up attending that game on Tuesday night against the Washington Capitals. I am very excited about that. Uh, we do have a couple of games to talk about here. As we're diving into it, make sure to follow us on social media at YWT Podcast. Kevin is at Kevin underscore Durso. Find us everywhere you find your podcasts, including sportstalkphilly.com. So, um, okay, diving right in. Um, we started the week in on Tuesday night in Edmonton against a team that had not won a game up to that point, uh, the mm-hmm. Edmonton Oilers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had looked pretty poor on home ice. Uh, and when that game started, it kind of continued. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, neither team looked incredible, but uh, a certain Russian kid picked up a couple of NHL goals, and uh, you know you end up coming out of that first period with a two goal lead. I, I mean, it's almost a footnote now in a way. Like, it like, like, is, I, like, yeah. like, I almost forgot that that's like the highlight of the week. I guess is like, well, hey, yeah, far the highlight of the week. Mafei Michkov sure. scored his first two NHL goals. That's great. Oh, by the way, well, and I, I think on the par- power play. Sure. I, I think partially it has to do with when you sit there and you say you start the week off knowing that you're playing a team that was in the Stanley Cup final last year, took it to a game seven, lost and had lost all three games they had played to that point. You knew they were hungry. So oh, yeah. and, and you knew eventually that the team that had scored three goals total in their first three games was not going to be held off the board with the names that they have. It just is not going to happen. You mean like the names like Adam Henry and Connor Brown? No, I'm talking about it by the end of the game. And I'm (laughs) saying, but I'm saying when you, I'm saying that makes you settle for the point in that game. Like, like, like you don't looking at this game with hindsight, you got a point in this game and that's awesome. It's a little more frustrating given kind of how the game played out. It's more no, it's, and I think it's more frustrating given how it played out and then what you follow it up with. Yeah, yeah. If if, um, if, we're, if we're sitting here talking about a blown two nothing lead and they won the next game, nobody cares. It's way less of a big deal, right? It's like okay, right. well, we got a point and then we came out and won the next game. We got three out of four, no big deal. Instead, you blow a two goal lead and then come out and put up just an absolutely atrocious performance against the Seattle Kraken for the most part, at least to start the game, and. See, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I thought their first oh, period was no, because their first period was fine. They, they got the, they got the first goal again. They took a two-one lead. Oh, at you're the right. End of the period. You're right. It was the second period that was absolutely terrible. No, you're right. Because that. So, uh, was there anything else you wanted to say about Tuesday in Edmonton? By the way, um, that you, you got two goals from Mitchkov in the first period. Yeah, you give, give up two right away in the, you know, in the second period. Take a three-two lead. You end up losing that game in overtime. Uh, the stars end up coming out towards the end with Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid on a two on one and two on zero in overtime. Um, I mean, essentially, and like, right, like one of the things, like I feel like I'm lumping a lot of stuff together with this because it, it's all relative at this point. They lost three games. Let's just be real about it right now. I, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of. I don't know if this is carryover from everything else that goes on in the Philly sports landscape that like, hey, you know, the football team isn't doing great. The baseball team got knocked out way before people expected them to, although maybe not really if you go off of performance value. But but I get but but you get but anyway, but you get my point. People are frustrated. And it was like the the season opener last friday couldn't have been any better it was like everything seemed you know and the kid didn't even get a point the kid you're actually watching didn't even get a point in the game but they win the game in a shootout goalie looks good team looks decent played a legit playoff team won and everybody feels good about them and you chalked up the calgary game to well it's an immediate back to back to start the season chalk it up right and cuz for the most part they were competitive in the game it was 3-2 late in the game yeah now, all of a sudden, following Saturday's game this week, it's like a complete turn, and everybody's already ready to replace half the team, 
replace the coach, replace this, replace that. And it's very contradictory. Well, so I find I find it to be because I, I, I don't think it's not contradictory. I'm not going to fight you on that. But I, I think the the reasoning behind that is last year, this team jumped out to a hot start. And we all expected them to crash back down to earth at some point. And they did eventually, but it was 40, 50 games after everybody else expected it. And I think it feels like the roster has taken a step forward, right? You know, you, you, the, the pieces you lost were on the older side or on the lower end side or, you know, however you want to phrase it, other than um, Sean Walker. Uh Beyond that, all the pieces you lost were kind of lower end. You know, Cam Atkinson wasn't playing a whole lot of important minutes. And then you added Matt Vemichkov. So it feels like there should be a step forward. Right. But but I think the the harsh truth of the, the matter is this team is 1-1-1 one, one, and one with their starting goalie against the same playoff team twice and then a team that went to the Stanley Cup final. And then they're 0-2 with their so you're pinning it. You're pinning it a lot more on goaltending, or are you I, like like I, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just curious. I'm trying no, to get your t- you speak from the fan side. I want to hear right. your side. So I don't think I'm pinning it on the goaltending. I, I maybe I am pinning it on the goaltending now that I kind of think now that you're forcing you're, me to think well, through yeah, it because you're literally pointing <laughs> out, hey, in the three games that Erson started, they're one one and one, and look at the quality of opponent versus. The two games that, you know, Fedotov got two games against non-playoff teams from last year is what you're trying. It's almost like and yes. And teams that I don't think I have predicted to make the playoffs this year either. Um, Sure. Neither did I. But right. So if Fedotov doesn't give up two goals in eight seconds at the end of the second period on Thursday, Mm -hmm. are they in that game? You know, if if. Yeah, but that's not the reason they give up two goals in eight seconds. I, I know it's no, I know it's not. And that's why, just like any other team sport discussion, it does not solely fall on the goaltending. That's why I'm not <laughs> sitting here saying, you know, ranting and raving about we need to trade somebody and Fedotov's not the guy and bring Polis out, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're no, not I, even going to get into I get that. that. I but don't also think it is solely the goaltending. No, but also at the same time, like, I, I don't think you're wrong in that game. You're pointing at the two goals that weren't on him versus to me, the all all three of the first ones were. Well, and that's that was my other point. Well, I think the Shane Wright goal is a little bit on him. Like, you'd like to see the save on that. No, the, um, the, the Shane Wright goal that's the fifth one? Yeah. The Shane Reichel is pay the hell, you know, pay a little bit of attention after the face off. That's falling that's asleep at the well, that is, no, that, that's that is the that's whole right. team falling asleep at the wheel, which that's carried right. over into the home opener. That's, oh yeah, absolutely. The whole team was asleep the entire home opener. Sam uh, Erickson played. He did. Right. And that's and that's your one loss. Your your one regulation loss with him in net right now. Like I said, they're one one and one with Sam Erson in the cage. And she has looked for the most part. Very solid. Um, are there a couple, you know, he's let up, he's let up what, what air, air seven, seven goals so far this year. I think you'd like to have maybe one of them back, maybe two. Then the only one, and I wrote this down, the only one I can think of is the one off the face off in Saturday game. where you'd that, like that's again the, paying that's, attention no but that but that's like the yeah but that's that also goes down to like uh, let me just I'll be blunt Maybe? about it no I'll be blunt about it they have sucked at face offs this season oh awful they have awful, awful, awful. at face offs well and when Sean Couturier is on your fourth line left wing I, it's not gonna help we'll get into that, that in a bit. that's that's gonna change I it has to um but regardless Sam's let up seven seven goals this year. It might only be six. Any regardless. Well, so maybe it, maybe it's one you want back. Two against Vancouver, three against Vancouver, and then the one in no, because he had the other game. So he no, he's let up. Where are you getting seven from? In his, in his starts, I guess is what you're saying, right? No, well, yeah, in his starts. In his starts. Well, no, no, no. Wait a minute. That's right. still that's still not checking out. Well, he let up two to Vancouver. Yeah, three four, to Edmonton. Four. Was it? Oh, it was four. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Okay. But but again, I don't know which of the Edmonton goals he's supposed to stop. I I don't necessarily disagree, different. and that's why I said it's one, maybe two at the most. Whereas, uh, with some empty nets involved, Fedotov's given up what nine or ten at this point. No time. Gave probably... up five to Seattle and gave up five against Calgary. It's 10. yeah, and I, and I probably want four of them back minimum that he like yeah. should have had. 
I, four is probably about the right number because like I'm coming up with one one specifically in the Calgary game. Uh, like it, generally speaking, the first goal in the Calgary game, you just don't want to give up. Period. I don't even pin it on the goalie. It's a bad bounce. Well, for sure. For just sure. don't don't even let that situation come to be. Where where I, I think, you know, I think that really stings your goalie's confidence, but it's not his fault. Right. But then the second one was. Yep. In that game. And then one, two, and three against Seattle were definitely. It, right. And it's just, it's, so I think, I think I am blaming it on the goaltending, but I would like to acknowledge the duality of, I'm not saying that Fedotov needs to be fired into the sun. Has he been atrocious? Yes. Has, does he need to get better to stick at the NHL level and continue making a significant amount of money? Yes. But from what I've seen so far, again, we're talking about a guy with five games on North American ice and only three starts. I, I, hear I'm, I acknowledge that he needs to get better. And I'm willing to give him a little bit of rope. But I think that is why the team is where they're at right now, factually. And and, and right? it is a piece of the, it's to me, it's if, a piece of the Sam Erson. If it's the same exact game on Thursday with Sam Erson and that Seattle does not score six goals. They, they just don't like I they, they, and they probably win that game at minimum. They probably get a point out of it. And again, I'm not, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing. Cause again, did I pick the Flyers to make the playoffs in my season preview? Yes. Do I still acknowledge that they are very possibly a bottom 10 team and will end up, you know, in the lottery hopeful range? Yeah, that is that is very much a possibility because this is still it sure, it sure as hell is now. Well, this is this is a developing team that does not have a ton of depth of talent through the first four five games. I texted you about this the other day. The defense has been so atrocious. I miss Nick Sealer. Oh, he, I'm willing, he is. I'm willing he to is give missed. Nick Sealer Norris trophy votes at this point. Like, and I'm joking, but like the team, there's no structure. This team has the structure of chocolate pudding. Do, do you want to know why I think that is? They have put such an emphasis on this power play needs to be better. It feels like they haven't worked on anything like that. Like, anything else. No. Well, and and not only that, but I saw specifically watching the game on Saturday because it was the first one I got to see in person. And maybe this is Vancouver knowing better, even from one game played against them and taking tape from the sure. season and, open. And but, Vancouver but they, is a better team than the Flyers are. Well, I and will I get say that. that. Sure, and I get that. They take away, it, like if if the if the answer is for the Flyers to try to move the puck fast and get through the neutral zone fast because transition was what was so successful, teams are taking it away this year. They know. Don't let them get moving. If we don't let them get moving. We're going to hold them down and then we'll be able to do whatever we want to because well, right, the Flyers just don't have the, they don't have the skill and the structure to get through you. They're only, their only play is to get past you. Well, it's not even that it's, I don't think it's even that it's right now. Everything is forced the, the, they are oh. overthinking the entire process, overpassing, not shooting enough. When they do shoot, they don't hit the net. It is a very flawed team at the moment that needs to get it on the rails quick. If they really want to be, you know, and I, and I, and I'm not trying to sit here and say like Danny Breer told you from the jump, it may be a step backwards. Absolutely. This is the, still the, this general, is, the rebuild the, is not over. No, but the general manager is right now is the biggest realist on the team. Because the coach isn't going to talk like that. The coach is out there trying to win every game. And the players are out there trying to win every game. And so far, what you've seen through five games is a team that is not close to good enough. Based and, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know, and this is what I worried about, was, well, it's really three things, but I'll lump it all together. Because I even said, the backup goaltending needs to be better, and goaltending in general, but the backup position needs to be more solidified for you to have a shot. Defensive structure mm-hmm. needs to be on point. To for yep. you to have a shot. What's that? And to be honest, I think that so far this is a team that is resting a little bit on the on the laurels of look at how we played last year. We're good enough. I agree. And they're gonna find out they're that not. Teams, well, no, not even it's not even that. They, they 
you can't just talk the talk. You got to walk the walk. So to sit there and say, oh, I think like now we're not going to surprise teams as much. Teams know we're like we mean business when we come into play. Then you got to mean business when you come to play. One of the most to me, one of the worst parts of that game on Saturday in particular was did you see any life from that team? They rolled over and No, Did they did they have any sense of physicality? Did they have any sense of of anything? I uh, know, and and I'm curious. Uh... Like now, actually, like here's to, I'll make a point because you brought it up in text too, as well. Yeah. At one point during the week, I honestly thought that some of the stuff about everybody going, well, nobody came to the defense of Michkov or Konechny during that Seattle game. Uh, man, I hate that. That's that, that's terrible. Well, all that type of stuff. And I really yeah, thought for a I little bit, was, and I really thought for a little bit that was overblown because I'm like. You know, maybe at some point in time, especially if the game is getting off the rails as things are going, like they're trailing. The last thing you need is to have anybody step in and then be off the ice for 17 minutes because that's how the league handles these situations. Especially when you're trying to come back and, you know, at one point in time, you're within a goal of Seattle. So, like, I, I understand. No, and, uh, right. But, well, and, but you don't know that at the time. Right. Like, like, like people were going nuts over that situation. And, and I kind of thought for that particular moment, it's the end of the road trip. It's overblown. And then they just looked like they had no juice at all for the home opener. Well, and I, wonder, and, I know, and I know that the trip happened. I get it. But like, right. Right. you don't have an off day. You travel on Friday. You don't, you know, well, when did it like, tough. like, it's not even that though. It's not even just that, you know, Vancouver was in Florida on Thursday and I'm sure they played what Tuesday in Tampa. Probably, yeah. yeah. But a couple but no, hours up 95 isn't the same as across the country. I'm, let's it, be honest. No, but they, no, but they had to get there at some point. Yeah. No, how, I is, know. how is it different that that's their third straight road game? They've been away from home. How is that sure. different? No, it's not. Well, the, the difference is they're a better, deeper team with more well, no, I get it, but I'm, and no, more but playoff I'm, experience. Yeah, but I'm saying you beat that team a, a, a week ago. Yep. Like, I get they're a better, deeper team. You beat them a week ago because you actually had some juice to your game. So, in the interest of juice, that leads me to asking questions about two players here. Okay. What is the status of Nick Sealer? Right? Is I he mean, still close? Guess, I mean, your guess is as good as mine at this point. He was clo- He was okay. supposed to be close on Thursday. Right. So is it safe now to he's assume mi- now that, he's missed two more games? And and and, it and safe it's to assume at this point that when he does come back, he won't be a hundred percent. Because he's probably. very clearly fight fighting through something. Okay. I don't look, I I I don't know. Actually, like honestly, I don't know because he could be ninety five percent and they're still saying hold him off the ice because it's five it games into the case, season. Honestly. But the problem is is that and this is what people don't have time for, is they don't have time for another story about Day to day, turning to week to week. Okay. He was day to day when the season started. Now he's missed five games, and the and first two and it will it will be two weeks, right? Um. Okay. Well, it, so at this point, we'll see Nick Sealer when we see Nick Sealer, and and like you said, hopefully yeah. this is like hopefully hopefully this is a case of them holding him out for that last five percent to get him to a hundred. If it's um, that, I don't know. He's been skating. Hopefully, hopefully. He joined, He skated with. He he is skating. He skated with the full team at one point. He's in a regular like jersey. On his own. I, no, I wouldn't go that far. I don't recall. They they, they barely practiced. Contact? Well, okay. they barely practiced. So we're talking. He participated in a morning skate that is not the usual type of stuff. Did not do all the other drills because he wasn't playing in the game on Thursday. But he participated. They never. They traveled back Friday, so no practice. No morning skate Saturday. No practice Sunday. So unless he's going over to the facility on his own to keep skating because he can skate, obviously. So he's doing something above, right? Right, but nobody's um, going to be there to worry about it because it's it's otherwise considered an off day. Exactly. And so, and that the other name I wanted to ask about is okay. a guy that we saw we saw on Saturday near the ice for the first time this season. At what point? If we're looking for a little bit of size, if we're looking for a little bit of snarl, what point does Nick Delorier draw into the lineup? And does one of these games against Washington make sense? Possibly. I mean, anything would make anything would make sense at this point. Like, like th- there's like there's an element where you literally ask yourself if he can't play and nobody else is willing to do anything, then what's he here for? I agree. Um, 
You know, and, and like like the idea that he was supposed to come in and on occasion and be like a bodyguard. Well, so far, like, and I'm going to tell you right now, like they they did introductions. He got one of the biggest cheers among players. Yeah. Well, because, sure. Well, right. Because why? Because he's Look the, the role he plays. Right. Right. And I get that, but it's like he got he got this huge cheer, and it's and and, and for all this stuff, like like I, I'd have to go back. Now, now I'm actually curious because I want to go back and actually see how many games because he he wasn't playing a whole hell of a lot down the stretch either. Right. Well, right. When when Last you were year. putting a, when you were putting the lineup on the ice to try to give yourself the best shot at winning the game because you needed the points, Nick Delorier wasn't in your lineup. He's on most nights. He's probably not one of your twelve best forwards, but he's a guy you bring in to. Send a message to your locker room after you get shut out three nothing in your home opener and look dead the entire time. I'd like to see Nick Delorier on Tuesday. That's just me. I hear you there. I get your and I get where you're coming from. I'm I'm um okay. That's really interesting then. So Nick Delorier has not played in any of the first five games this year. He did not play in the last six games last season. So he has sat out 11 straight games as a healthy scratch. What were they to, doing to the last six games? Well, hold on. He played on going, April 1st. Ripping onto a playoff spot with all their might. Sure, I get that. But, but and hold on. It, it doesn't, it's not even just that. He played against the Islanders on April 1st and was scratched. For the previous five games before that. And then that was where there was some regularity in the lineup. So he was a healthy scratch for 11 of the last 12 games last year. And now all five this year. So the only thing, and the only thing we talked about the last 12 games of the year last year was, ah, they need points. They need to make the playoffs. Ah, and they didn't get any, but like he's out of your lineup because he's not a He's not a great hockey player. I like Nick Delorier. I like what he brings to the roster. Because he's got a role, like you said. Exactly. He's he's Ryan and on, Reeves. He's yeah, but, and any honest, of these big guys. And honestly, it doesn't even matter. Like, like honestly, like the fact that we're even having a discussion, like I didn't I wasn't even prepared to have a discussion about Nick Delorier today because it's so out of sight, out of mind, not in terms of that whether or not he should be playing. It's like it's not even the, the beginning of the issues with the team. We touched a little bit on the goaltending, obviously. The defense has been a huge, huge, huge problem. That zamula line and pairing has been terrible this season. I agree. Well, and, and, then, and then because of it, you've got to put Eric Johnson in the Nick Sealer spot with Jamie Drysdale. That pairing's been an adventure. Johnson, now Johnson, now Johnson admitted, like, I don't, like, to be honest, I don't even think, like, Johnson's not one of the first two names I mentioned when I talk about the defense. No, he's not. No. Now he'll he shouldn't admit, be one of the first six names you mentioned in an minute. ideal world. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about by who's in the lineup. I'm saying if I'm okay. telling you how bad they are, he's not the first two names okay. I'm mentioning. It's okay. that Zamula Rista line pair that comes first. But That's John, enough. like Johnson's not really on the ice for the goals against as much as those two have been. Like Zamula is something like I'd have to go check. I'll, I'll grab uh, while, I, while I have hockey reference up for for the other because I was looking at the schedule to see when Nick Delorier like. How many yeah, games, yeah, yeah. how many games he missed? Because it's way easier to look at games played. I just want to see. You think you think Nick Nick Sealer coming back from injury solves a lot of your problems here, right? One, it helps your defense. It helps you stabilize, get everybody in the right spot, get everybody playing with the right partner. Well, sure. Like so, a little. I think a little bit of physicality in your lineup, and this this goes for Sealer and Delorier. Having a little bit of physicality in your lineup changes the way teams play against you. And I think teams are playing against you this year a little bit differently because they they're not worried about getting beat up over the course of a game. Tell they're that yeah. Not. Well, no, but just tell tell that to the you know to the people that talk about Rasmus versus the line in that way. Like the guy had a good camp. He's been terrible this season. He had a great camp. I came on here and said he's you know he was. Maybe your best or second best defenseman through most of camp. This is this is Rasmus Ristolainen who's supposed to throw the body like nobody's business, right? Who's supposed to be enormous and take up all this five, space and five, five games minus three nine hits. Since when? You know what I mean? Like Owen Tippett's got more hits in five games. Scott Lawton's gotten more hits, which is normal. Garnet Hathaway's got like 
Lawton and Tippett have more hits than Garnet Hathaway does too. Now Hathaway, at least I see it. Like Hathaway he took three. Pen- well, Hathaway took three penalties in the game too on Saturday. Yeah, see, through the first couple games of the year, he was doing a really good job of drawing penalties. And I think... Well, technically, he did in Saturday's game, too. He actually, t- in taking a penalty, drew a power play. <laughs> okay. But I, I think that first couple game shtick, when the refs are calling everything and everything's a little bit tighter, I think that worked for going at Hathaway. As we move into the season and the the, the whistles loosen up a little bit, you know, right. things settle down into the normal. I I think he needs to adapt and adjust and, you know, not take like, the penalty as well. Well, and I hear you there, but like, so like part of the equation for me with this also is, is that like, because you mentioned the abundance of penalties in the, yep. in the first few games. And I agree. Like that was one of the things that's for always me, the case, No, but that was one of the things for me, like the Edmonton game in particular, it's like, like I, like I, in in one of my various stops over the last week, because I did a lot of other stuff, go, like I had a lot of other stuff going on. I even said like three games in, I've learned nothing about this team, it feels like, because they've hardly played at 5 one five. It's all been power player penalty kill time. So like, it's great. Like, like, like the only thing I've learned is, yeah, no, no kidding that Matvey Michkov makes the power play look more competent. That's about all I got. Like, the penalty kill was still decent. and. Yep. And the power play is not going to be perfect, but it's at least uh, I would like the so one. They've been last. They've been last in the league for three straight years. If no, it's no, not it, that, it, no. But it's uh, the one thing that they have is is that you don't feel like you go into a power play because of Mitchkov. You don't feel like you go into a power play dreading it. You feel like maybe there's something like they had. There might pro- actually be some advantage here. They only they had what I think three power plays in the game, two or three or something like that. In Saturday, uh, in that, Saturday, in, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at. Man, I'm looking they, they had a they couple, were, and they, the they power play never looked good. Right, but uh, that's what I'm saying. Like that was the first game this year. Well, even no, even the last one that they had, the last one they had was much more on par. They just didn't score on it because it was like, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know what it is. It was the situation where now you're into a spot where the game is getting to a point where now you're trying to. It's like you're trying to score all three goals on one shot versus. <laughs> And, just and you just can't do that. If they scored a power play goal there, maybe that's some juice there, and then they go through the rest of the period. They might lose the game three to two still, but it might be more competitive. Speaking of guys who are trying to score three goals in one turn, can Owen Tippett relax, please? He's one of the. I mean, he's one of the. Is this is just his game? Yeah. I I know it is. I know. And I mean, let's like, he, and once he finds it, he'll put up six in you know a week and a half or whatever it is i know yeah and i mean in the, close, in the meantime right? man oof. like you you have two situations there and 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 whether like uh, owen Tippett's had two chances so far to turn a game on its head because you know he hit a post against edmonton when they were leading the game three to two that very well could have been the dagger because he made a great move to to get even into position right so that was one and then he had the post against Vancouver on Saturday where anything would have sparked something. Connect me hit one too, where you're like, oh man, you know, if they would have just gotten one there, it might turn the whole game around. I right, so I don't I'm curious for your read on it. The two on one, uh Mitchkov and um Tippett. Right. Sh- should Tippett pass that puck? I don't hate him shooting the puck. That's not the problem. And uh, I'm not sitting here roasting him for it. I'm kind of, kind of trying to figure out how I feel about no, it. But because Owen, I, I like the confidence of the shot. But Owen Tippett in, Tip in particular has a problem with the way he scores goals is he picks corners. And because he's yep. trying to pick a corner, the he margin for, well, the margin for error is very slim. Totally. So so you can put you can put it off the post, you can put it a foot wide, you can put it a foot over the net. It doesn't and, matter. And that's why I'm saying once it's on, it'll be on and he'll score five goals in four games. And like, I, that's just how it works when you're a corner picking guy. But like, like Tippett had four, like four missed shots on Saturday. And it feels like he has like four a game. I get it. Like, I get it. I totally get it. Collectively as a team, now Tippett only accounts for four of these. They had 23 missed shots against Vancouver. Like you're out, like you're out attempting the team. It makes it seem like you're playing a more competitive game. You're missing on so much that it like just continue. Like it, it, it further highlights 
one it's of impossible the to get any sort of flow. It's not even it's about just... getting into fl- it's not even about getting into flow. How do you build any momentum when you don't score? Right. At some point in time, you either bury a chance or you're going to get scored on. Like they're so deficient defensively that you better be able to score. Like, like I want to go back to some of the games that they played early last season because it's it's the same thing every year. It's not just the Flyers. Every team has big time struggles when it comes to defensive structure. Look at some of the scores that have been around the league since the start of the season. Like there's some really ridiculous scores. There was, I, I, I believe it was well, right. I was gonna say that was the day after we recorded last Ottawa, week. Right? Ottawa, and, Monday, the Ottawa and LA goes eight seven. Uh, yep. C- Seattle had already played a game. Like you're talking about, Seattle just won a game this week against the Flyers six four. They had the game before was seven three. Like you get some pretty weird ones. And it's the first like, two weeks of the season. We do always see some amount of no, that. No, but like, like here's an example. So the Flyer, like some normal scores, the Flyers won their opener last year in Columbus 4-2. to two. They lost in Ottawa. And Ottawa didn't make the playoffs last year, by the way, right? Like not a great team. They lost to Ottawa the second game of the season 5-2. Then you have like the oddball game. They win against Vancouver 2-0. They win against Edmonton, who was struggling 4-1. to one. Losing overtime to Dallas 5-4. They beat Minnesota six to two. They lost to Anaheim seven to four. You get these crazy goal scoring games where nobody wants to play defense because it's not like buried through their brain yet. They they played a back to back against Buffalo where they lost a game on home ice five two, then won a game five one, then lost to LA five nothing. Then a week later, oh, yeah, first, beat, first of the beat Anaheim six to three. Like it's yeah. all over the map. Now, that's the one piece of silver lining I'm willing to give, by the way, is if you go off of last season's schedule, they didn't start great last year. Like, I think people look at the the first couple of games last year that they won the opener and then won two more before, you know, like so that they start like they started the year instead of one, three and one as they are now. They started the year three, one and one and then kind of faded a little bit into what felt like what they were going to be. And then all of a sudden reeled off a couple winning streaks that made you turn your head around quick right like it was like okay now they might be better than we thought like i remember us doing a show we did it because it was a back-to-back on the weekend i was still at the center when we did the show they had just won their fifth straight game and it was their fifth straight win coming out of losing to of all teams san jose like like they lost to the san jose sharks who didn't have a win last year at the time to go to five, seven, and one, everybody was like, well, that just shows you right there what kind of team you're getting. They just lost to the winless team that is barely well, icing. And then, they went, and then they went on to be the best team in hockey for the next three months record. Well, because, because immediately, like that. Well, because immediately yeah. after they won five in a row, then had a little patch where they lost two, got a win, lost two. So they lost four or five, then won another four in a row, lost a game, won another three in a row. And you all of a sudden looked up at the end, at the middle, like right as as Christmas time hit. And they were second in the the division. Right. And they were, well, not even just, I'm not even going by this division, like standing. They went from five, seven and one to 18, 10 and three. Yeah. I, I know there was a stretch last year and it was a pretty significant stretch. I think it was two or three months where over that stretch, the Flyers were the best team in hockey. It, which is insane to say, given that we had a let. So we have to figure out whether this, whether last year was Cinderella and a glass slipper, or if that's who this team is. And I was, well, see, now you better, now you better hope that's what this team is because now you've invested in it. You, 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 you shouldn't be oh, yeah. paying, like, you shouldn't be paying Travis Konechny and Owen Tippett what you're going to pay them going forward you shouldn't well you shouldn't be doing that if this is if last year like if last year was just a fluke well and so i i think both things can be true right like i i can look at last year for those guys and say these are really good years to build on this i think owen tippett showed 40 goal potential i don't know if he's going to get there but i think he showed 40 goal potential uh, so I think those are things we can build on. I don't necessarily love signing based on one good year, uh, under that logic, but you can still at the same time, look at the rest of the team and go, okay, but like, we do still have these big gaping roster holes. We do still need some defensemen. We do still need a goalie. We do still like both things can be true, right? You can well, look I, at, I, I get it. Oh, and tip it and say, you had a good season. We expect you to continue getting better. Here's a nice big fat contract. 
and also look at the team and say, well, well, you know. No, but like my point is so far, like, and I know it's only five games. I'm not trying to have an overreaction to it, but I'm saying like you can point to those guys equally as much as like the guys that you feel like are like on the last legs here. Like, I get it. Like at the end of the day, if you're sitting here going, oh, the defenseman, it feels like the defense is terrible. But, you know, I'm and it's and it's Zamula, Ristolainen, and Johnson, that kind of thing. If Drysdale had a better partner, maybe it would help. I don't know. Like, like. Like, like, and I feel like there's still some of that going on, by the way. Like, I don't love the way Drysdale's played defensively at all, but that's not really his game. I get that. And I, and I get that. But and when Nick Sealer's there, that can handle a lot more defensive responsibility when those two are. Well, and I'd ha- I, look, and I, I'm not doing this with every single guy. I'd have to check. Like, like I can go look. And if you went and I again, plus this is why plus minus is not a great stat to go off of because. Well, because Drysdale's the worst on the team at minus seven, and then the next two guys in line are Konechny and Michkov at minus six. Then you get to uh, then you get to Zamula's at minus five, Frost is a minus five, Farabee's a minus five, Tippett's a minus four, and then like you have a smattering of others. But half of the reason is because you give up, you know, an empty netter in Calgary. You give, you know, you have, you know, Michkov and Konechny are out there in overtime when McDavid and Dreisaitl put something together Ooh, and you make one mistake and it's in the back of your net in overtime. That, that, that's one of the reasons, you know, plus minus isn't necessarily the world's best stat. Well, that's, I, I, that's why I just said right. like exactly that. Right. Like, like, like I sit there and I go like Michkov, like as recently now, now I do think Michkov was a minus was he minus well, he was a minus one in Van, against the against Vancouver. I think he was a minus two against Seattle. And I, no, go ahead. Yeah. Like as I'm saying, as a result, like that's what got it there. Or, like like I made way less of a deal about it when it was, oh, he's minus three through three games and one's an overtime winner and one's an empty yeah. netter where he's out there trying to be on the ice as one of your key offensive guys, right? Like now it looks a little worse because, but, but looks a little worse, not in the sense that I'm pinning it on the player. I'm saying it looks worse in the sense that that's, that's how bad defensively they were against Seattle and Vancouver. I was going to say, I've had, I've had pretty close to zero complaints about that. Maybe so far. Uh, oh, I'm, I thought oh, was, oh, I'm not trying to make this about me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, we haven't really talked about him too, too much. I, I did want to mention like he's looked solid. Obviously he's a bit of a younger kid still, you know, Still finding his legs a little bit in the NHL, still getting used to the speed of the game. Yeah, but you gonna, and, gonna, and have, you know to, exactly gonna have to have to get gonna have to get a little bit better at avoiding physical contact from time to time because he has taken some hits. Um, I, see, I don't think he's been hit that bad, other than the one in Seattle, like the one that, which by the way, probably was a boarding penalty. Should have been, yeah, right. That, that, um, goes, on, that goes uncalled. So, like, oh, it's been preseason mode for the refs too. Like, it's been um, like it both ways. By the way. Like absolutely, absolutely, no bias. Yeah. They've just been awful. No, no, no. Like it's 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 just been one of those things. Like like you have certain, and, and I'm not like trying to pinpoint, but like it feels like in every single game the Flyers have played this week, there was one official that called all the penalties and one who let everything go. It was really fu- it was really funny. Like to watch, you just, you just gotta identify identify which ref murder is legal in front of, and then go play in front of him. <laughs> um. But no, I'm, and I'm not trying to make this about like, like I wasn't trying to make this. And I know you want to highlight me. Yeah. But what does that almost sound yeah. like what you're talking about with Michkov? Sounds a lot like Connor Bedard last year in Chicago, where it's like, yeah, just because you're a great player doesn't mean that the whole team just gets better right out of the gate. Right. And turns out the ice in the OHL or the WHL is the same as same size as the ice in the NHL, you know. Michkov has even a different excuse where, you know, the dimensions are a little different and the angles are different. And when you're, when you're a creative passer, open space kind of guy, like he is, it's going to be a little different. No. And I, but I also like to your point about the physical context stuff too. I also get tired of seeing that too, because I'm sorry, did I not watch Connor Bedard take it to the jaw last year and stuff like that? Like, like there, like, Every one of them gets humbled in some way as being the okay. young kid who doesn't have all the size in the world yet, who's still growing into his body. Like, yeah, and, we, and we talked about it preseason. Like, Michkov's not frail. He's not petite. Like, he's he's a well-built kid. Like, he's going to be able to take No, and by the way, I saw a lot of people get freaked out because as soon as the hit happened, Jim Jackson, like, when he's hurt or whatever. The, the reason why is because when he went down, he put his hand to his head which could, which certainly could indicate you're not all there at that given moment. And that's what very, 
at very minimum, you're likely to get the attention of the concussion spotter at that point. Um, I don't know yeah, if you well, did or not, well, but, no, I, but you know. well, presumably Travis Konechny did later. I he, assume when, Travis when, when did, helmet yeah. popped off and he left, but he's been fine otherwise. He walked right back in and immediately started punching a guy in the face. So clearly he felt okay. <laughs> Um, you know, and, yeah, and listen, that's I'm the not, one thing they have done well is they've been willing to fight people. Apparently, I mean, uh, unless unless you look at that Seattle game and realize nobody didn't, and that's what makes that. And again, I'm gonna overuse a term: lack of response. I I think that's what makes that lack of response even more surprising, is because you have seen this team stand up all year, and I saw. Travis Connect and you get absolutely stapled into the boards, and then a teammate just kind of cruised by. I, I and think, it just, I, it I just think it might have been weird. If I, like, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that Michkov? It might have been, and like I don't Which, expect no, like who you don't want I, fighting people. No, absolutely not, absolutely not. But like growing up in this city, watching this hockey team, that visual hit my brain wrong. That hit no, I my know. brain Everybody like knows. this is a problem. And I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is. And again, I don't want Michkov dropping the gloves there. But if that's even if you go back a while, even if that's Simone Gagne skating by. Right. No, but he at and, least grabs the guy and goes, Hey, whoa, hey. No, and, and, and he and doesn't I, do anything. And I can counter my holds own him until somebody else shows up. No, and I can counter my own point because Michkov has done that. I agree. He's done it in other games. So it's like what am I like? What like I'm countering my own point with? I know you don't want him fighting somebody. Show a little bit of passion here. Show a little bit of defense, and that I'm gonna chalk it up to. We started the season on a four game road trip in Western Canada on a vastly different time schedule. We just traveled the border yesterday to get back into the states. I'm gonna chalk that one up to tiredness. And again, I, I don't know if that's an excuse. You know, we're professional athletes it making is, millions but, of dollars. But, but gen- generally speaking, it is. Something can, something can be a reason without necessarily being an excuse. No, but I'm saying it's an excuse, generally speaking. I'm sure that that comes into play if you have a mental lapse of like, I didn't jump in to defend a teammate in that specific moment. That's where, that's that's where I think it gets overblown. That like, I agree. like, you don't like it, it doesn't ha- it, like there are times where it doesn't happen every single time, totally. you know, right. and, and, and even when if you think it's warranted, it's like, listen, it's a it, that's a call you have to make split second decision. And if you and let's just wait, the later you go, the worse it's going to look. Absolutely. Well, and, and, you with more, and you're going to put your team even further shorthanded. And the fans looking at it the whole way, we know that it's Meechkov and Konechny, you know, probably your two best forwards. But like you said, on the ice in that split second, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to chalk it up to the end of the road trip and the travel and the blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's an excuse. Maybe that's a reason you can, you know, take either right. direction. But that's what I'm going to chalk it up to just because. We have seen it other times. We saw right. it all through the preseason. We saw it, you know. I think we're going to see it this week because, and I this will kind of transition us to our looking ahead here. Mm-hmm. You play the division this week. You get Washington twice this week. It's time. Yeah, you can you can mess around with the Western Conference all you want and play a couple Pacific Division teams and, you know, have a little. You got Washington back to back. Right. Tuesday in Philly, Wednesday in Washington. You're going to see Tom Wilson all night long. Get ready. If if he's being physical and not scoring a ton of goals. It, for regardless, you got to be ready for him. Oh, I know. No, I'm just saying you usually usually we specify and it's Tom Wilson's the physical guy who's going to try to pick a fight with somebody at some point and I'm, oh, I'm really going to be the guy who is doing the I'm, goal scoring. I'm nervous that he scored one. What that Ovechkin did? Yep. Yep. Sure. Here he comes. He's only 41 away. Well, and let's let's be real. At some point this week, he's going to have another goalie he can add to his book. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, because he'll he'll see Fedotov on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm sure. Probably Wednesday, I would imagine, right? Because you're you're thinking you go Arison Fedotov here, right? I don't know. I mean, you need two points. 
Like I think I think if you had one on Saturday, you could go for no top Tuesday. But I think with Urson or with you losing that game on Saturday, I, I think you need to run Urson again on Tuesday in front of the home crowd. Possible. I wonder if you run Fedotov in front of the home crowd just to break it Somebody up. Somebody's that game. I really hope not. No, but hear me out too. If you play him Tuesday with the rested team, theoretically, and, he's got a better shot. And put the uh, well, and put the goalie you think is clearly better in the back to back when you need the sharpness. Like, like end of the I, day, I end of the day, I think you'd want Fido, you, you would want Fido to have less in a game where you just played the night before against the same team, no less. So they have all this stuff. You want a goalie who's pretty much been sharp every time he's been out there. I I think. I think some of that depends on how you look at Filotov. If you look at him as a guy who can can win a game under the right circumstances, then yeah, you play him on Tuesday. Well, he, hasn't like, looked, he hasn't looked like a guy who can win under the right circumstances so far. Because he's because because what he's doing wrong is fixable. That's also Hopefully. why. No, you that's, think. It, it has to be. It's to me. It's it has to be. It's, it's positioning. You would either, think either that or either that or like then then the game is that different in the KHL. Well, he's also twenty seven years old, and at this point, he is what he is. Like it's not this isn't, Kolos, this isn't Kolosov where he's a kid yeah, he, and can adjust he, still, you know, and he's still know, kind of I, learning and developing. Like this, know, but he's I, a guy. But I've seen it pointed out multiple times because he allowed two goals that were relatively low to the ice to start that Seattle game, and he's standing as tall as he can be, looking, looking over screens, over people, and, yep. and you don't do that in the NHL because teams are going to use screens to their advantage. Well, if then you're, the Flyers need to get a goaltender coach in there. ASAP. Well, they have no, they have goalie coaches. It's just uh, then you got to keep working at it and and hope he doesn't default to something like that. Like that's some at some at some point in time that's got to come on fall on the player too. No, like absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Like how do but you if, see, but, but how, like how do you see about, the goalies play the but position? About but about ten minutes after it falls on the player, if he doesn't start to fix it, it falls on management. No, I hear you, but at the same time, like, like, okay, let's let's play. Let me play devil's advocate for a second here, and let's sure. talk about because everybody went right to it was. We're talking two starts. The guy got two starts this year, and everybody wants the twenty-two year old to come up and play in a game. Who proceeded, by the way, on Friday Looked to play in the first to make his second start. It's not even about looking awful. It's just he gave up four goals. One of them is his fault. He turns it directly over and it goes into an empty net. But the rest of them, whether it's his fault or not, it doesn't matter. He gave up four playing, playing behind a defense. that's probably missing their top player because he's been sitting on the bench since he got called up to be an emergency replacement as far as I know. Right. And, but like, my point is, is that changing out the goalie wouldn't do anything. And it's, it's, and, and it's where my contradictory point comes in because it's, what do you hear people say a lot about this team? Like, it's the same argument you could have with Jet Lachenko about whether or not he stays or goes after nine games. Because you could make the argument he's one of the two best centers on the team through the five games. Because, hell, you took one of the guys who was playing center and bumped him to fourth line wing before the home opener. I've I've ar- I've already noted that I think Ryan Paling's had a rough start to the year. Rough start. I don't e- I don't even know you know when it came down to it. You know, I don't even know who the hell is playing the, the, the other center position when you don't have Couturier playing center to begin with. Damn. You'd have to go back and like go through that that it, like piece by well, Lachenko's playing one of them. Frost is in there. You you know, you and, and like Frost is the only other one I put in that category. So there's people who are gonna sit there and say, Well, then Lachenko should stay because he's one of the three best centers on the team. Or two best frankly, centers on the team. But frankly, but, can I tell you who I think the four best centers on your roster are? Go ahead. If Luchenko stays, because uh, by the way, as we're recording this on Sunday morning, there's some rumors that Luchenko may get sent down at some point. Well, it's, been, believe... it's, been, a, it's been a rumor for a while. Yeah, but there's rumors specific on now. Um, I know, but I'm saying, no, I'm saying there was a rumor for a while that after the fifth game was when they were going to do this. Oh, that's And that makes sense. That, let's just say that's what Sn- Snow the goalie had that. They did and they did they a whole if they have it, then well, they no, have it. No, but Snow well, here's where it was. Snow the goalie brought up this thing about how they did a preseason interview 
with all with the whole main group, Dan Hilferty, Danny Briere, Keith Jones. So I assume this was on record because they brought it up. Like it's or like they brought it up to make it on the record, I suppose. But like the, their crew brought up that Danny Briere at the elevators afterwards said something about I, I my main focus is Jet Lachenko five years from now, not five weeks from now. Yeah. And and that's where a lot of that stemmed from. But the bottom line is that what's contradictory is, is that you want Fedotov out of here, potentially two games in for another goalie. And then, and, and then you want Lachenko to stick around because he's possibly one of the two best centers currently on the team because you don't like how Couturier started and you don't like how Paling has started, right? And also like that. What's contradictory is, is that that may be very well coming from the same people that were on the tank committee. I know just pointing out that when I woke up this morning, and I looked at the standings. If you didn't know better about the other picks that they have this year, you would be yelling to stop the count right now on the standings because Colorado is 30th, the Flyers are 29th, and Edmonton is 28th. And that would be three teams in the top five of the bottom of the lottery that you have their picks. The great thing about the NHL is that the season does not end in late October. No, but here's the, here's the thing. You you look at that and it's play to not play to like what you think like but think about the expectations for these teams. At some point, Edmonton and Colorado are probably going to get it back on the rails. They both won uh, their yeah. like at some point, but a slow start doesn't hurt for what you're looking for because a slow start could mean you're not really challenging for the division anymore. Like like Colorado plays in the same division as Dallas. It, it, that's Dallas they're already they're already player. eight points behind because Dallas got off to the hot start. Now it could it could level that's out silly. at some point. It could level out at some point, but like guess what? I'll do I'll do you one better. Not only is Colorado eight points behind Dallas, they're six behind an unbeaten Winnipeg Jets team. Okay, through four games, yeah, like that Central Division is wild and. Speaking of wild and the central division, yeah, they the do Flyers will also games. close their week uh, with a home game against the Minnesota wild. Uh, and then the good news is here. We will be back shortly after right. that game to talk about them. Right. But like, so like, but that was my point was like, they're look at where they are in the standings. They're one, three and one they're toward the bottom of the standings. And they're actually talking about like, they have to give more of a leash to Fedotov to find out what he is. They might be finding out what Kolosov is and it might not look any better. They might send Lachenko back and it would hurt their center depth. And all of those things contribute to what everybody has talked about draft position. Like, right, exactly. I, I, like, like as much as you picked them for the playoffs, I didn't. And the reason I didn't totally. is because I thought the defense was going to look like this. Cause I thought that the goaltending might look like this. And as a result, it's going to possibly put you, I even gave them better than this. And it might still turn out to be better than this. Like they're still what fifth from the bottom is what I had. Fourth. Something like that. I'm pretty close. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, they are pretty close to the bottom. Um, that is kind of where we're going to wrap it up for today. The good news is we have a couple of games here uh, for the Flyers to kind of start to establish themselves. This is the first week, real week of the regular season, as far as I'm concerned, where you kind of have that mix of home games and you can kind of start to get into the flow. Uh, so we will, speaking of getting into the flow, we are getting into our flow here. Um uh, we will be back next week at some point. I, I'm not sure if we've talked about a Sunday or a Monday, but we'll we'll be back at some point early next week with our normal show. We will be back every week after that uh, through Christmas at this point. We are locked in for a while. So join us along. Uh, subscribe wherever you're listening. Uh, we are follow us on social media at YWT podcast. Follow Kevin at Kevin underscore Durso. Um, you can find us everywhere you find your uh, podcast, including sportstalkphilly.com. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. Kevin left me here, and I'm doing this a little bit on the fly. Uh, wrapping up for you. I think that's about it for today's show. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, comment, subscribe, rate us five stars, do all that happy garbage. And uh, until that, uh, we'll see you.